You know, with all the talk about fertilizer, how do you know the best fertilizer choice to use for whatever you're growing in your garden or landscape, especially with all the options out there? And what do the numbers on the fertilizer package mean? Well, today we're breaking it down to the fertilizer basics so you can learn the what, when, and how to use any type of fertilizer with confidence. Fertilizer provides nutrients that are key for optimal plant health, and the primary nutrients are nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Now those ingredients are represented on the fertilizer package by three numbers that are prominently displayed. Now before we talk about the numbers and what they mean, let's address the primary nutrients and what each one's best known for. And a simple way to remember it, and in this order, is up, down, and all around. The first ingredient in the ratio is nitrogen. Nitrogen helps with plant growth above ground. Nitrogen does a great job of promoting the green leafy growth of foliage and it provides the necessary ingredients to produce lush green lawns. Lawn fertilizers will frequently have a high first number, a high level of nitrogen. The next nutrient is phosphorus. It's very effective at establishing growth below ground in the form of healthy root systems. It's also the component most responsible for flower blooms and fruit production. You'll notice that fertilizers designed for flower production or starter type fertilizers for your lawn have a high middle number representing phosphorus. The third ingredient is potassium. It's considered important for overall plant health. This is primarily due to its ability to help build strong cells within plant tissue. In turn, the plants withstand various stresses such as heat, cold, pest, and diseases. For example, winterizer fertilizers will have a high third number, a high component of potassium. So about the numbers on the fertilizer package and what they mean. The number always represents the percentage of that primary nutrient relative to the total weight of the package. So for example, a common all-purpose fertilizer is 10-10-10. And that means that 10% of each of those nutrients is how much of that nutrient is in the bag. So let's take a 50-pound bag, for example. 10% of 50 pounds is 5 pounds. So in a 10-10-10 ratio, you have 5 pounds of nitrogen, five pounds of phosphorus and five pounds of potassium and it's always in that order nitrogen phosphorus and potassium so in this case we have thirty percent of the total volume of nutrients so what happens to the other seventy percent well that's what's considered filler or inert material which is just really there to help bulk out the packaging and make distribution of the nutrients easier so now that you understand the basics of the numbers and what each primary nutrient is mostly responsible for What's the difference between organic and synthetic or man-made fertilizers? Well, first things first, plants can't distinguish between organic and man-made nutrients. The chemical makeup of each nutrient is the same no matter where it originates from. However, man-made synthetic fertilizers are typically engineered to be water-soluble. That means they become available to plants quickly when in contact with water. So the upside is that if you need to get nutrients into a plant quickly, water-soluble synthetic fertilizers do that best. The downside is too much of a good thing is definitely not a good thing. Excessive fertilizer to the plant too quickly can either burn or harm or kill your plants. So think of it as a potentially deadly nutrient overdose. It's really easy to apply too much synthetic fertilizer. And the other risk is that nutrients that aren't taken up by the plant can leach into aquifers and run off into watersheds contributing to adverse environmental impact. Organic nutrients, on the other hand, need to be broken down in the soil first by the microorganisms that live there. And the breakdown process can take anywhere from a couple weeks to several months, so they become a form that's soluble that the plant roots can absorb. But along the way, those nutrients are becoming part of the soil ecosystem. Now, the really good news is those organic nutrients are never in a concentration that's high enough to harm or burn your plants, and that's a good thing. Now the downside is that because it takes a little while for those nutrients to break down, they're not readily available, so it requires a little bit of patience. But in my book, organic nutrients are the best way to fertilize your soil because you're feeding the soil while the soil feeds the plants. Some of the more common organic nutrients for nitrogen include blood meal, cottonseed meal, fish emulsion, and seaweed or kelp. For phosphorus, look for bone meal and rock phosphate. And for potassium, green sand and sulfate of potash are good choices. So what am I using here at the garden farm? 
Well, if you know me at all, you know that I love to feed the soil so the soil can feed the plants, so I'm using organic nutrients. And yes, I recognize that it can take a little bit longer for those nutrients to become available, but I've been feeding the soil constantly, so I always have nutrients in the soil. And I also like knowing that what's in there isn't doing any harm to the soil ecosystem or the plants growing in it. So for me, my choice is to feed the soil so the soil can feed the plants with organic nutrients.